And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. of a wonderful new bestseller, The Fratricides, Mr. Morris Edelman. And I'd like to introduce, uh, on my left, an old friend of mine, I know, I've known her at least half an hour, Miss Phyllis Newman, the beautiful and talented young actress, straight back from London. left, the president of Random House, who has a big week coming up. His son, Christopher, is going to graduate from Harvard, Bennett Sir. Nice to see Maurice Edelman here, a Random House author. <laughs> I have a letter this week from somebody in Johannesburg, South Africa, saying it might interest you to know that the four principal exports of South Africa a gold, diamonds, sorghum, and John Charles Davis. <laughs> we have no gold or diamonds or sorghum around us, but here in person is John Charles Davis. Well, I must say that practically leaves me speechless. I'm glad in a way, because I, I really want to congratulate Bennett on his son's graduation at Harvard this week. I think that's something to be really proud of, Pa. Arlene is at home, and uh, I think we will all agree needs still to be cheered up, so we're going to cheer her up tonight, panel. Mr. Edelman, I'm glad we've got a member of the House of Commons here, and Phyllis, it's nice to have you back from England because we've got a first one that's a zinger for you tonight, and I hope Arlene has a lot of fun with it. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger. And now to meet our first challenger, will you enter and sign in, please? Viola Scott, right? <laughs> Is it Miss or Mrs. Scott? Mrs. Mrs. Scott, where are you from? Amarillo, Texas. Amarillo, Texas. Amarillo, Texas. Well, it's nice to have a Texan with us tonight. Thank you, thank you. Amarillo is that wonderful city that has the green park in the middle, out in the middle of all the dry land, isn't it? Well, it doesn't, it, we have parks, but not too many. Not too many? No. Well, you should be proud of the ones you have, because that's dry country. May I present our panel, Mrs. Scott? That is. Now, will you join me over here, please? Do you know how we keep score, Mrs. Scott? Yes, I do. Fine, then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Colonel Mrs. Scott is self-employed and deals in a product. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Sir. <clears throat> Mr. Scott, would this product be representative of the state of Texas where you come from? Uh, from the state of Texas? Would be representative of the state of Texas. I would say that it has a direct relationship to uh, something that you would think of when you think of Texas, yes. Is your product, or has it, has it ever been, alive? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, is it possible to find this product in New York? Yes. Just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> You're speaking of New York City? State. State. Oh. <laughs> I think we could sneak one through there. Yes, I we really can find it in New York State. State. Mm -hmm. oh. Is it something that would be found outdoors rather than indoors? Outdoors but it's never been alive. Does it have any connection with anything that might be alive? Yes. Is it something that would be used on a farm or a ranch? Ranch. Just say, just say yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Scott. Uh, it would be used on a ranch, uh, out of doors on a ranch. Um, is it something that is used in connection with cattle? Yes. Is it um, used by cowboys, cowhands? 
You mean specifically by cow hands and well, a cow hand in the normal pursuit of his, his uh, well, occupation? Well, could he use it? Would it be possible for him to use it under any condition? Well, I would think we would have to say there, no, because it hasn't any direct relationship to the individual cow hand. That's right. two down and eight to go, Mr. Edelman. Well, Mrs. Carter, are you happy in your work? You've got a nice cheerful smile. I beg your pardon? Are you happy in your work? Oh, yes. You are, indeed. Now, uh, this product of yours, uh, I take it that it could not be uh, used in London as easily as it could be used in Texas. That's right. It, yes, it could not be used as easily in London as it could yes. be in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> That's the yes. Now, um, is it made of uh, a leather material? No. no. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Newman. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Scott, you use this product in connection with the cattle. Do you touch the cattle or feed them in any way with this? You don't touch them. When are you speaking about uh, Mrs. Scott's either touching the cattle no, or the bringing them food? The product that she has. Does, this touch, does someone use this to touch the cattle? Does somebody use this? Well, I would think we would agree here that you're close enough to uh, the oh, truth I'm to give you a yes. Oh, I'm thinking of something specifically. Would, when someone touches the cattle with this thing, does it sizzle? Does it sizzle? No. <laughs> That's four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. <laughs> Mrs. Scott, when the cattle touch this product, is it some particular part of the cattle, usually that touch some same part that touches this product? Well, I would think that any uh, well-oriented cattle would use it uh, in such a manner as to tend to touch the same part most of the time. Wouldn't you say so? Well, just, but we'll have to have a small conference. I've never had one of these myself. Well, certainly, uh, well, I won't say anything. I don't think John knows much about the <laughs> Then if we don't want to mislead you, so I'm that I would just say again that any well-behaved member of the uh, troop would uh, tend, uh, in using it, to uh, apply it to the same general areas, yes. Well, would the general area, uh, Mrs. Scott, be above the neck of the cattle? Above the neck of the cattle. That's, <laughs> that's right, John. That's, no, right? No. 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 Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are the cattle, Mrs. Scott, happier or better off because of this product? Yes. It isn't anything that irritates them, is it? No. Or upsets them. Uh, but it is not food or drink, is it? No. Uh, it has no connection with food or drink? No. Is it something that is worn below the neck? Something that is worn below the neck. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Edelman. Uh, is it something that's more beneficial to cattle than to human beings? Yes. And uh, is it something which has to be manufactured? Yes. Uh, is it uh, something which, when manufactured, I could hold in a single hand? Mm, if I was strong enough. I didn't hear the question. Well, is it something when manufactured that uh, Mr. Edelman could hold in his, his oh, one no. hand? No. No, I, I think it would be pretty much of a chore for you. That's seven down and three to go, Miss Newman. Mrs. Scott, does every head of cattle have one of his own? No. no. <laughs> Eight down and two to go, <laughs> Mr. Sir. Which uh, Mrs. Scott, uh, is this product used in any way for the cattle to recline or rest on? No. Nine down and one to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mrs. Scott, does this product ever act as an enclosure for cattle? No. No. Ten down and no more to go, and actually it's just a good old-fashioned back stretcher. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Scott is president of Old Scratch Incorporated, and I, I can only give you a journey. There's a central tank which has an insecticide in it, and then it has two sections that fold out from it, and the cattle come in between the tank and the outward sections, and they scratch themselves on it. And as they do it, the insecticide automatically comes out of the glockenspiel, and this gets onto the mergentroid, <laughs> and the first thing you know, the cattle have no more longer about the Putensnaden. You see what I mean there? Yeah. <laughs> But it's, it's uh, really it's quite a gadget because it, it uh, allows the cattle a good deal of relief and cleans up some of the, uh, what? Mm -hmm. Can they do this whenever they want? Yeah, you set it up, you set the tank up with the thing and the cattle get, you know, it's like it everything else. You like where you get in. your habit back forming, spread. Habit forming, is it, Mrs. Scott? Big point. Would you say this was a habit forming thing? Well, it didn't have forming, but it, uh, they liked it. What did they do before the machine? 
Well, they used to spray. <laughs> this, el <laughs> this eliminates the spraying and dipping of cattle. I see. And they used to scratch themselves against fences, fences and things like yes. that before. So Actually, when you said, Phyllis, did every head of cattle have one of these to himself, <laughs> Mrs. Scott said, I wish they did. Well, I can <laughs> see why she would. Thank you very much, Mrs. Scott. It's a lot of fun having you with us. <laughs> Will you enter and sign in, please? Mary? Margaret? Rebel, right? <laughs> Is it uh, Miss or Mrs.? It's Miss. Miss Ravel. And where are you from? Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, Michigan. Yes. Oh, nice to have you with us. Miss Ravel, the panel, if I may. You join me over here, please. You know how we keep score. Yes. All right, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we can tell you that Miss Ravel is self-employed and deals in a service. And let's begin the general questioning with uh, Phyllis Newman. Thank you, John. Uh, Miss Rizell, is this service something that both men and women can use? Yes. This thing that you do, is it something that would be connected, you're a very attractive girl, is it something that could be either construed as theatrical or athletic? Yes. Yes. Do you do what you do? When you do what you do, <laughs> and do you do what you do? No. When you do what you do, do you use your body a great deal? Yes. Is it something that you learned? Uh, I mean, did you learn it? Had to go to school or something to learn this? Well, now, you want to pin this down no, as not to requiring school, school education? No, but did you have to study what you do? Well, and let me, it's hard here, Phyllis, to, to uh, not be unfair. Now, if you're asking, is a special degree and character of instruction no, necessary? No, 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 I didn't mean that at all. I'll go on to the next question. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, do you do what you do for an audience? Sometimes. People pay to see you? No. No. That's one oh. down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Ravel, uh, can I narrow this activity down to some form of athletic endeavor? Yes. Is it done outdoors? Yes. Uh, is it uh, done more as an individual than as a member of a team? Yes. Is it done on land? No. Oh, oh darn. A few down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, is it done on water? Yes. Is it done uh, in conjunction with any form of apparatus? Aside from your own body and your bathing suit, do you no. have anything with you? You mean no. that she uses herself as a personal part of the activity? Well, I mean, is there anything else involved besides just herself? Anything non-human? No. no. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Edelman. Uh, Miss Ravel, you're a very beautiful girl. Uh, could we use your services in England? Yes. Uh, are your services uh, related in any way to the instruction of others in the activity that you pursue? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Newman. Can we narrow it down, Miss Ravel, that you do some sort of aquatic sport, swimming, for example? Yes. Now, you swim and people come to see you, but they don't pay. Are you an amateur? I mean, you're not considered professional. No, I'm not an amateur. Oh. That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. <laughs> Sir. Miss Ravel, are your activities more confined to swimming than to diving? Yes. Are you, uh, have you got some kind of a title as an amateur in swimming ranks? No. Well, now this, I think, with your permission, will qualify. Because I think what uh, Mr. Surf is getting at here, do you have a record which is outstanding, I mean, which would stand medals? against? What I meant by that, uh, some records or? No records at all? But you said as an amateur, Bennett. Right? Well, she said she was an amateur. No. no. Six down and four to go. That's Miss Kilgallen. Uh, well, have you won any meets or any prizes as a professional? Have you won any meets or prizes I, as a professional? I, yes. 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 Uh, do you do anything aside from ordinary straightaway swimming in your work now? No, it's straightaway no. swimming. Actually, I'm going to put the card there because substantially you've got it because it gets very particular and interesting now. 
Uh, Miss Ravel is a professional long-distance swimmer and holds a great many records. <laughs> so far, would you just list some of the, the, the uh, swims that you've made? I know this. Well, I hold eight world records. My latest swim was the Straits of Messina in Italy, round trip, and other swims have been the Bosphorus, the Dardanelles, the Straits of Gibraltar, the Sea of Marmara, the Bay of Algeciras, the Straits of Mackinac. Um, well, what are you going to do next? Well, my next swim is the Bay of Biscay, a very small part of it, in France, and after that I'm going back for my second attempt on the English Channel, and after that I have about ten other swims. Ah, wonderful. Congratulations, Thank and you I very hope much. that you have a successful time. We'll meet our mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which the panel, as always, is blindfolded. Blindfolds, all in place, panel? Yes. Indeed. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? Remember, a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you in motion pictures? Well, maybe I am, and maybe I am. And... <laughs> I think we'll have to give you one down and nine to go on that, Mr. Edelman. Uh, have you crossed the Atlantic lately? Um, maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. <laughs> Yes, I did. <laughs> Miss Newman? Uh, are you currently, or in the past season, have you appeared on a television show? Maybe I did, and maybe I did. Well, now, really. <laughs> yes, he did. Oh. Mr. Sir? When you appeared on this television show, did you ever raise your supposedly different voice than you're giving us now in song? Sometimes I did it, sometimes I did it. <laughs> Miss Gilgallan? <laughs> Would you like to give us the answer to that, John? That was yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, could you play a handsome leading man if you had to? Well, to save him... Maybe I could and maybe <laughs> I could. <laughs> And that also means yes, Mr. Edelman. In that case, could I ask you, are you male or female? <laughs> no. You can't do that, uh, Morris, because it's going to be answered yes or no. You can take one or the other. Uh, are you female? That's two down and eight to go, Miss <laughs> Newman. <laughs> uh, are you known primarily as a singer? Yes, I am. <laughs> Mr. Sir? Did you ever form part of an act a couple of years ago with a very clever lady named Kay Thompson. Maybe I did and maybe I didn't. <laughs> did you? Yes. Oh. Andy Williams. some trouble when they got to television, the Andy Williams show on the unnamed network NBC on Thursday nights, I believe. Yes, that's right. And what are you up to now? Well, I'm on my way to Philadelphia. I open there tomorrow night, outside of Philadelphia at the Latin Casino oh. for two weeks. You're going, to, you're going to move around all summer then? Then I'm going to do some tours with uh, Henry Mancini and his band oh. in the Northwest and Seattle and Portland and Vancouver and uh, a couple fairs. Good. Of course, I think Andy is remarkable as one of those rare people on television who seems so thoroughly relaxed all the time. And I 
Must say that it shows here. He hasn't got a bit of nerves. Many somebody, people somebody said that he made Perry Como look like a fellow with St. Vitus Day. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andy, we hope you have a wonderful summer, and it's nice of you to stop by and visit us in What's My Line. Well, it's uh, such a favorite show of mine. I'm delighted to have a chance to come on it. I thank you, sir. Thank Good you, night. sir. Good to see you. Points you've done rather well so far tonight, panel. We'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. Will you enter and sign in, please? Omar? Elsa? Elsa. 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 How are you? All right. Uh... Can you tell us where you're from, Mr. El Clifton, New Jersey. Clifton, New Jersey. Sure. May I present our panel, sir? Yes, sir? Would you join me over here? You know how we keep score? Yes, Fine, then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we can tell you that Mr. El is salaried <laughs> and deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with Mr. Edelman. Is it a product that uh, I could use, Mr. Elsa? Yes, you could. Uh, could it be used equally in, say, Britain uh, and America? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, is it something which is uh, used indoors? Yes, it is. Uh, is it uh, decorative or is it, uh, or is it useful? I is it something which is useful in the household? It's both, I would think. Uh, and in addition to being useful... It's, it's uh, useful in the yes, house. Yes, it's useful. Is it something which, in addition to being useful, is also ornamental? I would not want to call it all ornamental because I think no. it would mislead too no. many people. That's one down in Niagara. This is not to say that at some moment you might fix it so and say, isn't it pretty? But then you wouldn't leave it forever, you know. Miss Newman. If I had this product in my home and it were a two-story house, would it be on the main floor? I should think so. Would it be in either the bathrooms or the kitchen most of the yes, time? Yes, it might yes. be. Is it something that has movable parts? <laughs> Two down a day to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Alsace, is this product of yours consumable? Yes, it is. Is it imbibed through the mouth? Yes, it is. Is it eaten? Yes, it is. <laughs> In other words, it's a, it's a food rather than a drink. That's correct. Is it a food that is used uh, by both sexes? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, without, any ap without any opprobrium attached there, too? Correct. Is it a uh, food that could be used uh, really more for one meal than another, more for uh, most of the time? Uh, it could be used for any meal. But more likely it would be more used likely for one kind of a meal rather than another. That's correct. Could we eliminate breakfast from those considerations then? Would it be more likely to be used either at luncheon or dinner than at breakfast? I would think so. Is it an accessory rather than a main course? Could be. It could be. Hmm. Uh, is it any part of the vegetable kingdom? Yes, it is. Hmm. Hmm. Is it green in its native natural state? Not in its natural no. state. And I'm afraid we're, we're running out of time, so oh. I'm going to have to throw all the cards over. Just one quick guess. What do you think it is, Philip? Turnips. Tomatoes? Toothpaste. Yes, no, how's spaghetti? Oh. No. <laughs> Mr. Uh, <laughs> Alcester is the C.F. Muller Company. C.F. Muller. Muller Company, Company in, in New Jersey, and spaghetti is it. Thank you very much, sir. I'm sorry we didn't have more time. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. you will. I'm afraid, panel, I've used up all the time. Good night to all of you, particularly nice to see you, Phyllis and Mr. Edelman, and good night, Arlene, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line? What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotman. Johnny Olson speaking. Hi, I'm Gary Collins.